Let's look at different ways that we can sample from a population to learn about that population. Typically, when we want to learn about a population, let's say HB high school students and their sleeping habits, we could actually go around and survey every member of the high school um, population at HB. But that would take a long time, and in some contexts it could be quite expensive. So instead, we might pick out a sample, say, by putting all the names of the high school students in a hat and then drawing a sample, say, of 30 or 50 people. And they form our sample. We'd study that sample and hope that that informs us about the population. Now, that's very appealing because, in theory, we'll get a representative sample. But we do run the risk in our sample of getting too many seniors and not enough freshmen or too many sophomores and not enough juniors. To resolve that, we can move on to the second type of sampling, which is called stratified sampling. And I'm going to take a moment to erase what I just put on the screen, and I'll draw a little bit of, sample of stratified sampling. Here, we might take our population and before we survey it, break it into four groups. Ninth graders, 10th graders, 11th graders, and 12th graders. And from that, from each homogeneous group, we would collect a simple random sample and put them into our overall sample. And the appeal of this technique is that now we know that our sample is representative of the population, at least when it comes to grade level. And if we believe sleeping habits are associated with grade level, then we have made sure that our sample will inform us well about the population. All right, let's move on to the next type, which is called cluster sampling. And here, rather than breaking our population into homogeneous groups, we will instead find one heterogeneous group that we think represents the population well. And if we're looking at HB students, perhaps one group might be Bill Podolsky's concert choir class. We might believe that that captures, that class captures the whole variety of types of people at HB Woodlawn. And then we would do a simple random sample from that group, and we would have our sample. And we would hope that that one cluster is representative of the whole population. And this has real appeal if your population is very spread out, and it will be difficult to get to all different parts of it. Instead, you can find one small piece and focus on that one small piece and hope that that will tell you a lot about the population. All right, we have two more techniques to talk about just briefly. I'll erase what I have here. And we can talk about systematic sampling. And here, the idea is to just come up with some methodical way of collecting your sample. For example, you might put all the names of everybody in the high school on a list and then you might go through the list and pick out every tenth person and just drop them into your sample. You could also do this by sitting outside the cafeteria and just talking to every tenth person who walks into the cafeteria and hope that that methodical way of, of collecting your sample will represent the population. It's somewhat of a convenient sample as well in the sense that you are not going out of your way to hunt down people. Instead, you are just coming up with a method that will allow you to collect your sample relatively easily. And then finally, our last method is called multi-stage. And really, it's just a collection of the other stages, or of the other techniques. In multi-stage sampling, you combine one or more of these techniques to create your sample. For example, what we could do is first take our high school population and break it into its four homogeneous groups or four strata, ninth graders, 10th graders, 11th graders, and 12th graders. And then within each of those, we might choose to take a cluster. And those clusters might be the English classes. So maybe an English 9 class. And then like similarity, an English 10 and an English 11 and an English 12 class. And then within each of those English classes, take a simple random sample and build our sample for the whole population. So here what we've done is we've combined not only stratifying at first, but then collecting a cluster within each strata, and then doing a simple random sample. So we've created what's called a multi-stage sample. 
Now, each of these techniques has appeal in certain situations, but it's important to understand their benefits and also some of their limitations. And that's what we'll be exploring in class. That's it.